What a time to choose to launch a channel. That's quite incredible. I'm very sorry, Rory. You and I previewed the game yesterday. You were very humble. You did kind of predict that in the end, Chelsea wouldn't get through it. Um, yes. But they, you got through it way better than I think either of us expected you to. And this game was way closer than most people will have predicted, apart from a couple of people in my comments. No, I think, I think, you're, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. I didn't really think that Chelsea had a chance. But by the time the game was 20 minutes old, I thought that we were the better team and I actually thought we were going to win it. There was a time when I thought, Chelsea are actually going to do what Chelsea can do, which is turn up in big cup finals and make a nuisance of ourselves and actually rise to the occasion. Yeah. So I truly believe that we were on course for that to happen. I agree. And I mean, we really we, we really were. I mean, it, it, Chelsea, I think, can feel legitimately hard done by today. There were certain moments where it could have been slightly different. Maybe a Liverpool player could have been sent off. Maybe Lukaku's goal could have stood. Maybe certain things could have been different. But at the end of the day, I think you just have to quite simply hold your hands up as a Chelsea fan and acknowledge what we acknowledged yesterday when we were talking about this game. I agree. Liverpool are wicked. Liverpool are so difficult to beat. Liverpool have built something truly sensational. And Liverpool have therefore won the League Cup. And congratulations to them. What is it that you think... Um, like, Can I talk to you for a second about the Lukaku thing? Yes, I think that was a goal. We met, yeah. I think um, that should have been a goal. Do you think it was the right idea to bring on someone that you think will have undermined elements of the squad? Or do you think this is also a sign that Tuchel's actually managed this very well? He's still got a workable player in the team. Lukaku came on, scored a legit goal. Mm. What's the narrative for you? Because everyone's going to be talking about Liverpool pushing on for the title. How does it go for Chelsea? Yeah, it's really difficult for me, Loz, because, because my approach to it isn't one of... My approach to it is one of emotion. Mm -hmm. Whereas... Thomas Tuchel's responsibility is to be more clinical. Absolutely. His responsibility is to see the wood for the trees and do the best thing for Chelsea to win the game. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have any emotion. He doesn't have to have any emotion. He needs to just do the best thing for Chelsea to accrue the cup. His investment's in him, essentially, when he's something, exactly. not Lukaku. Right? And, if, and, if he, and if he determines that Romelu Lukaku is something that can benefit Chelsea and therefore bring Chelsea the cup, then he needs to play him. Mm -hmm. I personally, though, approach the situation totally differently because I approach it through emotion. Mm -hmm. I think that his conduct has been appalling. I didn't really enjoy Romelu Lukaku's conduct post-match. Celebrating, sort of kind of celebrating with Liverpool players. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not so blind as to not know that friends in clubs, like, he's obviously friends with Divock mm -hmm. Do you know? I I'm obviously know that. But I also think maybe there's a responsibility to just... Like, Dial do it that back. in private. Text do it, it later. Do it yeah, private. do whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, do it in private. Because Chelsea fans don't really want to see you laughing with Divock Origi. I'm not stupid enough. Like, me and you could laugh. Mm -hmm. But equally, you have a responsibility to do that. Where, like, fans are crying in the stadium. Chelsea fans are crying in the stadium. Right, yeah, especially some of the kids. Yeah, yeah, you're joking yeah. around. You don't see that, obviously, you, you know, and especially on your wage, you don't necessarily see that some people have probably spent a lot of money to get to London, stay exactly. in a hotel, build it up. Might be their sons first. It might be their, their granddad's last. And we want to see you as heartbroken as we are. Yeah. Not laughing. And, and, you know, it would be very, very naive to suggest that Romelu Lukaku is a fan of Chelsea. I know he doesn't support Chelsea. I know sure. he doesn't particularly want to play for Chelsea. Mm -hmm. But I would also say that Maybe he owes us the courtesy of pretending that he does. I get that. Just, uh, just, at just least pretend. while you're there. Yeah, just, just pretend that you do. But, you know, so, the, the Lukaku thing for Tuchel, I think it was probably right to play him because I don't rate Lukaku, I don't really want him at the club, but I would also say, without any bias, he is the best striker at Chelsea. Yeah, is he the most effective is another question, which is probably one of your videos to, later on there, because I do think Kai Havertz has proven to be very effective, played off a Mason Mount or a, yeah. a Christian Pulisic. Kai Havertz there. as a false nine is the best Chelsea have looked all season. Yeah, I Kai, ha Kai Havertz, um, I, think, I think the issue is, like, I rate Kai Havertz, I like him, and I think he can be a lot better, and I'd like to see him reach his top level consistently. Mm -hmm. But the problem, for, the problem for Havertz is the supporting cast. Yeah, absolutely. Like, Christian Pulisic isn't really good enough. Yeah. He, isn't, he isn't really good enough. And we don't really get enough out of Timo Werner. And we don't get enough out of Kai Havertz himself. And we don't get enough out of Romelu Lukaku. And Hakim Ziyech has been very good of late. But overall, it's been fairly underwhelming. And I get that. I don't want to kind of dominate this video with me moaning about Chelsea players. But ultimately... You've done it. Sorry. No, yeah, no, sorry. Enough. But do you know what I mean? Like, I could, I could kind of go on there. Yeah. Talking about like Mason Mount, as much as I love him and as brilliant as I think he is. And his season isn't, hasn't been that bad. He hasn't got anywhere near the heights that he has previously. No, but I, I, again, I Injuries kind of think, and whatever. Again, but. I'll go back to the fact that, you know, Liverpool have won it today, so it's very easy for me to concede maybe an advocate should have gone off. Lukaku's goal mm. was probably a goal. You guys had the better of the chance in the first half outside of Mane having that save from Mendy. Yeah. You had three chances that sailed past Kelleher's left post. Yeah. And we're talking like that far, if not literally just yeah. by the post. Our and those should have been put away. You yeah. should have been maybe 2-0 up, maybe 2-1 up. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Our goalkeeper made brilliant saves, mm -hmm. which is his job. Whereas our 
your, your keeper didn't make the saves. Our strikers missed. You, yeah, and, and not only that, I think it's also then, there's, it comes down slightly to Liverpool, Liverpool's reputation. Liverpool want the other team to play at a frenetic speed. They want to force you to have to play very quickly through that back line. Mm. So when you do get a chance, you snatch at it. Yeah. Because you go, we've got the chance, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, you hit the post, all these different things. Liverpool switched off multiple times. And ultimately, I think it's probably the pressure and the reputation of the team that makes people miss those opportunities. Yeah. They snatch at it, they I put mean, it wide. I mean, you're playing, you're playing against one of the best teams that I believe ever, has ever been assembled. Mm -hmm. I think this Jurgen Klopp team and this evolution of the Jurgen Klopp team is just a juggernaut. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to play them. I think that Liverpool will almost definitely win more silverware. I don't see why they won't win multiple trophies from now. I don't see why Liverpool don't win the League Cup and go on and win the league and something else. I don't see why that does. It may not happen, of course. But you can't write that off, can you? Let's give Luis Diaz his, um, his praise today because I feel... Yeah, Mr. No-Look Pass, how many can one man do in a game? Mr. No-Look, Mr. Run Past and Mr. Uh, I'm probably the best of the front three today. I did think Mane did a great job dropping deep, but I've got to say, I think Luis Diaz carrying the ball. I also just think his demoralisation of players, I think the way he hangs it out there. It was a great performance and one that was really going to... like. He's hit the ground running at Liverpool, which is credit to the Liverpool training and it's rare him. and yeah. it's rare for Liverpool mm -hmm. like even even players as good as Robertson and Fabinho took their time yeah you know Fabinho didn't get in the team Robertson didn't play for about six months also to get in just to, to, to understand to get the system the clock. yeah, and, yeah. Also, and also mate like I, I think sometimes when you because you're a Liverpool fan maybe the prestige maybe you become accustomed to the prestige but right. you know because I don't support Liverpool and I'm fully aware of their their state and where they where they reside in the hierarchy of brilliant teams mm. You're, you're Liverpool fans, so you're not aware of it. But you know Luis Diaz, when he's playing for Porto, suddenly they go, Liverpool want to sign you. Yeah. Mohamed Salah's there. Sadio Mane's there. Jurgen Klopp's there. The cop. It's an iconic uh, It's an iconic stand. The fans are famous around the world. Like, he's going to go, hold up, what? Like, you I'm know, it's going to be a Liverpool. moment for Liverpool, yeah? Like, it's a, it's a levelling up. It's not and enough, it just hasn't. it just hasn't affected him. It's, well, yeah. When he scored that dink. Yeah. Whoever you played the other day and he dinked it over the keeper, I was like, bruh, what are you doing? Like, you're brand new, man. It's not only that. Yeah, he's coming, hit the ground running. It's not only that, but then he's seeing all the other players celebrating around him. He's seeing what culture he's just joined. Mm. It must be really boring at that point. And then not only that, but Harvey Elliott comes back. I thought he put in a great performance in the second half. He found so much space. He was taking himself do away know, from other players. Do you know players. what he did, which I didn't enjoy, but now the game's over, I can enjoy it because it's brilliant and I love it when my players do it. Agro. Absolutely. Yeah, Agro. the little push when Agro. Trent was facing up to... I, did, I enjoyed Agro. that bit because I also love seeing players sort of be a bit human, lose their also, head a little bit, go forward. Also, forward. I'd say one of the hardest players in the Premier League in terms of like a straight line. There's mm -hmm. a Royal Rumble in Premier League footballers. Antonio Rudiger is in the ring late. Absolutely. I'm not saying he's the hardest, but he's in the ring late. Mm -hmm. And Harvey Elliott's my height. Yeah. He didn't seem too fussed. No, Trent didn't seem all that fussed either. No, Trent didn't seem fussed, but Trent wasn't starting a fight. And also, Trent was going head-to-head -head with Havertz. Yeah, yeah. It was when Rudiger came over. I'm not saying that Trent would be bothered, but when Rudiger came over, it was Elliott, who mm -hmm. was very much at the front looking up like that. I get that. And... I kind of emphasise. It also feels good, though, by the way, when you've got Van Dyke and Ibrahim Kanate behind you. you sort yeah, of it's going to help. I'll push him It's going to help. You yeah, get yeah, him. Yeah, 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 yeah it really helps. So I think this Liverpool team, they've shown well, they're well balanced. I think they've shown the depth this squad has got. And it felt like a couple of weeks ago, or even just towards the end of the window, oh, do we really have enough depth? Do, what do we have here? Yeah, they're I can bringing on Milner. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yes, is the Do you know, if, if you were ever in doubt, as because obviously Man City's depth is often flagged, if you were ever in doubt whether Liverpool could compete, just look at the substitutions that were made away at the San Siro and then at home to Norwich in consecutive games. Mm. You're bringing on, uh, it was away from home at the San Siro, it's Firmino, Keita, Henderson, mm. elite, elite, elite. And then at Norwich to change the game, it was Thiago Alcantara. And Thiago uh, comes out of the squad very early today, obviously with an injury. Yeah, that could have upset the rhythm massively. That massively does. Yeah. Liverpool, I mean, I think Liverpool's confidence is slightly hinges on Fabinho and Thiago starting a game sometimes and getting that that um, the fact they can break it up and distribute it so quickly mm. from either of those players Thiago's a great professional fowler all those kind of things those things yeah. counted today and he's Hen a winner he's a proven winner he knows what it's like to play in a cup final like, no, I love that he was sobbing on the sideline because he wasn't playing today that's the League Cup mm. final imagine what it would be like in another one yeah. of those finals. see how much it well, means we'll to these out. guys you're talking about Lukaku at one end hand over the mouth mm. That's him on the sideline. He, he doesn't know a camera's on him, all these yeah. kind of things. He's out there, he's, he's, he's sobbing his heart out. I really like that. So ultimately today, really happy for Liverpool. Congratulations. I'm very sorry. Thank um, you. Yeah. I Thank appreciate you, you doing this, by the way. Yeah, oh, especially mate. when it's so difficult for me. Yeah. Uh, it's an honour to be on your channel. Appreciate it. We'll see you guys uh, later on for another review. We'll probably see you tomorrow morning. Much love. See you in a bit. Bye.